Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some important stuff which is a Udems Substance Painter and Texel Resolution. Those are the main topics. If you know my channel, I um, I teach this in sort of like a classroom approach. So we're going to be explaining some theory and some important aspects that we need to consider. And then we're going to do uh, the exercise, of course. Now, before we do that, though, let me jump here. This is the character that we're going to be using. But I just want to make a quick, quick, super quick note for you guys, because yesterday we have our month uh, Monday live stream, which I'm trying to keep this... Or I'm trying to keep it as a as a standard sort of um, as a standard sort of thing. And the people were asking about the other live streams. So if you go to the next two channel here and you look for the live streams themselves, you're going to find all of the live streams right here. They're not going to be on the videos, but all of the information is right here. We have live streams from all over this. Now, also, I've been working on some of the playlists. So we have like the game ready character, the animation for social media, the Pokeball. Uh, we're organizing a little bit of this. These are like full projects, except for the lighthouse. That one's incomplete. <laughs> but everything else are full projects that you can follow along in order to learn some of the basics and if you want to uh, like keep going and you want to learn some of the more advanced stuff not only from me but from other amazing structures right now we have this super amazing deal hey guys i'm here with a great deal for all of you for the next five days we're gonna be offering a 90 percent discount in all of our udemy courses 90 percent, guys this is the lowest we can go for our discounts and you are going to be learning from industry veterans and experts all of the workflows techniques tips and tricks that you want to become a great 3d artist we have modeling we have rigging we have animation we have sculpting we have characters environment creatures a little bit of everything you can get a 90 percent discount for the next five days if you follow the link down here all of the courses are recorded in real time, so you're not gonna miss any part of the process. They include the project files. We have a support line for questions. You can ask questions on the site and we'll be getting back to you as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, we are also offering a free 30 day money back policy. So if you buy the course and you don't like it, I don't think it's gonna happen. If you don't like it for any reason, you get your money back within 30 days of your purchase. No questions asked you get your money back. So if you want to learn any 3D skill and you want to start this year strong with really good skills, really good fundamentals, make sure to check the link down here. Hurry up. Remember, this offer is only going to be available for five days. So join us and become an amazing 3D artist in no time. So yeah, now in the video it says five days, but it actually started counting on Sunday. So the video, this video is releasing on Wednesday. It's from uh, January 15 to January 20th. Okay, so Time is running out. If you're seeing this on uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, make sure to hurry up if you want to grab that special offer. Now, let's jump into this character right here. This is a character that I did ooh, so long ago. I'm actually going to show you the, the date. This was, I think I did this in 2014. It was one of the characters that I did uh, when I was in school. And I remember back then it was the, um, it was the modeling class and we had to do some hard surface modeling objects. The first half of the class, we did a car. I did a Mercedes Benz. I'm going to be using that one uh, soon. And then we did this guy. Well, I, I did this guy. E everyone could pick their own like stuff. So let me show you here real quick. Because I do think I have the, the reference image. Yeah, there we go. So this was the concept. Right? I don't even, I think I found it like back then art station was not a thing. So I found it like in deviant artists or something. And uh, it was this like geisha robot, the really, really cool sort of like sci-fi ish uh, character. And this was my interpretation of it. So um, one of the things that we had to take care of, of, of course, was like perfect topology. So as you can see, everything is squats. Uh, I might have a couple of triangles here and there and that we did have to deliver proper UVs. So if I go look this and I check this out, you're going to see that every single piece has proper UVs. I don't have textures right now, but it's it should be proper UVs. Now, one thing I'm going to do here, is I'm just going to throw in a quick unfold because I remember I did this again back in 2014 and the unfold tool was not available yet. So as you can see, some pieces might have, might have unfolded wrongly uh, back then, but there we go. Now, um, what are UVs? Well, we know that UVs are a 2D representation of, a, uh, of a, a, a 3D surface. Normally, when we use the layout tool right here, the layout tool is set to only use one tile. So if we press Control L right here and we pack everything into a single UV, you're going to see that we get this. Now, this, even though it's not the cleanest UV like layout, could potentially be used for the character. But here's where I need to talk about textile resolution because this is why uh, UDIMs are so important and how they like uh, 
like match with everything. So um, I downloaded, there was a, this a site rolling around a couple of uh, days ago and I downloaded this, give me just one second. Go back to the projects. There's this uh, very, these are very famous uh, UB, um, UB checker maps, this guy's right here. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can find the, the site and, and share it with you guys on the comments, but you can create your own with like your, like whatever specific colors you want, the type of letter, type of font, it was really fun. So I got this one right here, It's it looks very good. So I'm gonna grab this whole character right here, control, uh, right click, and I'm just gonna say, or not, not control, just right click, and I'm gonna assign a new material. I'm gonna assign a very basic Lambert material, and on the color, I'm gonna plug in the, um, the file itself. Now we definitely need to set our project here real quick. I was working on something else. So let's uh, really quickly set our projects. There we go. So that when we look into the folders, we found ex we find exactly what we need. So in this case, I'm gonna grab uh, this one, custom UV checker. There we go. So if I press number six now, you're gonna see this. And uh, what we're seeing right now is the UV map being projected into the character. And this is a perfect way, uh, like these UB checkers are really good to know if the UB islands are pointing in a specific direction. For a character like this, I don't really think this is an issue if things are like all over the place because they're going to be really random materials. But imagine you're doing something that has a specific pattern to it, like clothing or like a character. You definitely want things to be aligned like up and down, vertical, horizontally. And this is why the UB checkers are so important. But now I want to talk about, again, the texel resolution, which is how many pixels or how many... Now, how dense each pixel is on your image or on your texture. So if I grab all of these guys right here and I go to the UV option right here and I select my UV shells, okay, and I go to transform, Maya actually has an in like included texel density calculator right here. So if I say, hey, the map size is going to be a 496 map, what's the size of my texel resolution? It's going to say, okay, for a 496 map, you have a texel density of 20 pixels per unit. So for each centimeter that we have, we have 20 pixels available. That's a little bit too too little for what we have right, right now. And the reason why uh, that happens is because we're using or we're, we're trying to, to have a lot of pieces in a single uh, place. Now, it, it's not that bad, actually. 20 is, is perfectly fine. Like It can work, but it, it's a little bit low. Imagine we have a super big building at the side of this character, like this. If I have this huge building, which has a huge surface area, and I assign the exact same material, this one right here, you're gonna see that, yes, it looks very good, but as soon as I start getting closer, it gets pixelated. So if we wanted to give this specific object a better UV or more textile resolution, we would need to have more space because right now, again, if I say get, I only have a 1.4 uh, pixel per unit of this element. So this thing is pretty much like 10 times bigger than the character right here, which means that the textures are going to be 10 times as a stretch. Right now, this this uh, map, I think it was like a 4K map or something. It's really clean and you can see that we, we get very little distortion. But as we get closer, we're going to see the pixelation. Yes, if we're far enough, we're not going to see it. But depending on the kind of close-up that you're going, like imagine we're going for a close-up here for the character. This is not good because we're already seeing a little bit of the pixelation. And that's where, again, like the calculations of how much textile density uh, you're going to need comes into play. It always has to do with the kind of shots that you're going for. If we're always going to be seeing this character at this distance, like imagine like a Street Fighter game or something like that, where this character is going to be at this position, then it might be perfectly fine to texture it with a 4K map and that's it. But if we're going to do like a cinematic and we're going to have a super, super close up where we're going to see pretty much like the eye like this, we definitely need more to be able to see this thing right here. So how can we get more space? Well, we need to break one of those rules that I always teach my students when they're beginning, but I, I, I teach them also how to break them later on. And it's, we can actually split all of these pieces, all of these UB pieces into multiple spaces, okay? So this is called a UDIM space. I'm actually not sure if UDIM stamps for something, but the way it works, it, you, it's, you pretty much map out specific section to different parts of this UDIM, like C, and when you assign it to a material, we need to do a little bit of a trick there to make sure that it knows to read each individual UDIM section. It's exactly the same thing as if I grab like, let's say the head, and I only use like the like the UVs from the head, like this guy's right here. 
I just pack them into a single one. And then I do this and I pack them into another single one. So instead of having five or six different materials, you can have one material with multiple UDEM tiles. And that way you just map one texture and it knows where to find all of the information. It's it's mainly for, for uh, optimization purposes when connecting stuff because performance wise, it's still very heavy. Like no matter how many tiles you're going to have for each tile you have of a UDEM, that's how many extra pieces of textures you're going to have. So remember that whenever we do bakes, we have a, a diffuse, we have a normal, we have a roughness and a metallic, right? Those are usually the four maps that we have. So for each tile, we're going to have four extra maps. The memory, as you can imagine, is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if we have 20 maps, we're going to have, um, I'm bad at math, but 80, 80 maps, right? Like if we have 20 UDIMs, we're going to have 80 texture maps. The amount of resolution that we're going to be able to get is going to be amazing, but it's going to be way, way too much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all of the pieces. I'm going to grab all of the shells. I'm going to go to Tools, or sorry, Modify, Layout. And the only thing I need to change is down here where it says Tile U and V. I can change this and say, hey, how many do I want? I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I want two or actually five on the U, so on the horizontal, five. And I, got, uh, I want two on this side. So we're going to have 10 um, elements uh, up and down, okay? So 10 UDEMs in total. When I hit Layout, this is what's going to happen. Maya will try to pack all of the pieces into these new layouts. And as you can see, it's going to try to find the best position for each of them. Some of them will be in good places. Some of them might not be in great places, but it's going to try to pack everything so that we now use 10 UDIM spaces to fit all of them. And what's the, the consequence of that? We'll look at the face, for instance. We're going to have a huge amount of a resolution here on the face. Now, this face is freaking me out because the, the UVs are super, super wrong. This is a very, very flat face. So to be honest, the easiest one for this is just a planar mapping and then just unfold. As you can see, that face is like perfectly fine right there. So uh, let me just see if we have any other area that's like problematic. Doesn't seem like it. This guy's right here a little bit. No, that's fine. Is it fine? It's kind of fine. Having a little bit of an issue unfolding on a couple of areas. You can see how it, it's like, like this area right here is not unfolding as nicely. So let, let me show you how to very quickly fix these UVs. I think those are the only ones that we need to fix. Um, to be honest, easiest way here, just cut line through the center, especially through that section line right there. Just UV, cut UV edges. Same thing here. UV, cut UV edges. Let's control U, don't fold, still having some sort of, oh, okay, I can see this. Okay, so this line right there, let's do UV, uh, cut UV edges, and let's cut this guy right here. I know there's like a lot of like crazy pieces there. Where else is it having issues? Okay, now it's fine. This one, as you can see, is now fine. We just need to properly scale it. So let's go to this one real quick. Same deal. Let's say uh, UV, cut UV edges, and then that guy and that guy, cut UV edges. Let's unfold. It's going to clean some stuff. Perfect. Cool. So now uh, everything should be uh, properly unfolded. We select everything again. And we just say control L by doing control L with everything selected, it should match the scale of everything. So everything should have the same proportion. And as you can see, we get a cleaner effect. So now if we take a look at the face, you're going to see compared to what we had before, we have way more resolution. Like we can go really, really, really close here to the face and we're not going to see the pixelation just yet. Okay. So that's one way in which we can play around with the textile resolution. Now, how do we get this into substance so that we can texture it and, uh, and just add some very basic materials? Well, we're of course going to select the whole thing. Let's export this to our assets folder. I'm going to create a new folder called uh, robot uh, geisha. Robot geisha. And technically, Substance Painter should allow us to import this thing exactly as, is, as it is. It's not going to import the smoothed version. Right now, I think I was in like a, a subdivision mode, uh, mode. So it's going to export the, the not subdivided version. If we want to export the subdivided version, then what we need to do is we need to smooth it uh, before we export. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we can work with this. 
So let's go here to substance. And the way it works here inside of substance is actually rather simple. We just import this thing. Go to our uh, projects. Here, right here, assets. And we import. Now here we're going to have to do something interesting. Uh, since this is working with UDIMs, we need to tell it, hey, this is using UV tile workflow. And it's going to say, okay, do you want to convert or do you want to preserve? And I actually want to preserve right here. I'm going to hit OK. And what's going to happen now is it's going to load the scene. And if everything works as I'm expecting it to work, which it does, you're going to see that our character is right here. And over here on the top side, we have the name of the material, which was Lambert 2, and all of the UDIM islands. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because it was 5 and 5. So we can go to UDIM tile uh, 1, and we can say, for instance, hey, I want to fill this with like this bone material. We just drag and drop the bone material. And as you can see, uh, oh, actually, right, right, uh, something interesting is happening here. Um, we're not working on just one material. We're working on everything because this is a new thing, like relatively new. They added this like two years ago where uh, you can actually paint across UDIM tiles. This was very difficult to do a couple of versions ago or a couple of years ago. But nowadays, you can paint between uh, UB tile, uh, UDIM tiles. So, yeah. So, if I just drop this bone texture right here, you're going to see that this bone texture is going to be assigned everywhere. Now, this uh, bone texture is assigning a 2K texture to every single point. And we can tell this a little bit more. We can say, hey, you know what? Let's style this four times so we don't lose as much uh, resolution. And look how nice we can get everything to look. Why? Because if we take a look at the UDIMs, what's happening here is uh, this texture is being repeated throughout all of these elements. So instead of having just two, a 2K texture, we actually have like a 10K by 4K. So it's like we're having a 40K texture. And uh, that's the way we're going to be uh, getting as much resolution as we can. Here, you work exactly as you would expect. So we can go, for instance, um, oh, it, it, it bugged out. Let's see if we can recover this. Window. Toolbars. Texture set settings. There's a bug that happens sometimes. I'm just going to restart real quick where you lose the texture set settings. So let's just select this guy again. Open. Hit OK. There we go. So we can do the bakes. So you can do the bakes, even though we don't have a high poly, we can still bake a couple of maps. So if I hit bake mesh, you can see that uh, we're going to get some, sometimes you get like a warning thing here. I'm just going to say bake selected textures. We're not going to get any normal information or it's just going to be like a very no basic normal information. And then that's the ID. We don't have any ID. That's the ambient occlusion. Super important. Look at that beautiful ambient occlusion. By the way, this is the newest substance painter. That's why the baker is a little bit different than what we've seen before. Uh, and there we go. We just return to painting mode. So now, as you can see, we have a super clean ambient occlusion, not so pixelated because of the amount of uh, resolution that we have. If I go now to my smart materials, for instance, we can grab this machinery and just drop it into the character and it will automatically fill this. Look at that with an amazing, amazing like dust and everything. Look at how how clean we can get this detail. Like you're you're probably not never going to have this this as a close up like this close to the character, but you can still do it. You can still get this very, very amazing effect. So that's it, guys. That's how you do uh, UDIMs. That's how you uh, bring UDIMs into Substance. And that's how uh, you start painting UDIMs here inside. One thing that you do need to take into consideration, the amount of, uh, of performance hits that you're going to have here in Substance Painter and in other softwares when working with UDIMs is quite high. Instead, of, it's, it's like if I was working with 10 models at 2K resolution. So what you can do is you can go here to Texture Set Settings if you're having issues. And on the uh, view properties, or actually doo -doo -doo -doo. over here on the view properties, we can lower, where is it? It was on the texture set setting. There we go. On the size, we can lower this to a, a lower size and then at the end export at a higher size. So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. I do want to texture this uh, like Geisha robot and I will do it for you, I promise. But we're going to be doing that on another video, okay? I want to keep them separated. So this is how to set up and, and prepare your model with UDIMS inside of Maya and inside of Substance Painter. And uh, in another video, in the next couple of days, we'll, we'll work on texturing this girl so it looks really, really cool. So yeah, that's it. Hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.